Hello everyone, welcome to uh, part 4 of this OTV module. In the previous three sections, we had a look at the basic OTV overview, the, o the operational workflow, how it works. We had a look at the OTV under the configuration. And also we configured the OTV in the multicast mode uh, in order to provide the l reachability between the two sides. Uh, if we look at this topology here, uh, we had a CSR11 in site number one, which is green site, and then CSR21, which is in the yellow site. So we configured the LAN segments of both sides, and then we configured the overlay interface on both CSR11 and CSR21 to uh, to pass the layer two, uh, to, to, to extend the layer two over the OTV ISIs. And then we verified that uh, this host router here in site one and the host router here in site two, they can ping each other, right? Now in this section, we are going to take a look at uh, uh, the OTV in the unicast mode. And as we talked about it in the uh, first two sessions that uh, there will be infrastructures which doesn't support uh, multicast. In that cases, you will need to use OTV in the unicast mode because OTV multicast is not going to work if the underlay doesn't support multicast. Let's say for example, you have internet connectivity between the site one and site two. Uh, your internet provider will not likely be supporting the multicast operations. So that's the reason you need to use OTV in the unicast mode in those scenarios, right? Uh, what we will do in this example is uh, we will configure CSR 11, CSR 12, 21, and 22 in the OTV unicast mode. And we will see that uh, we still have the reachability across the sites. And also then we will take a look at the layer three routing between site one and the site two. Uh, uh, how to how to do it all right now um, one quick thing is about otv adjacency server uh, is, is a is an important concept which we use here uh, what we configure is we configure one of this router uh, it could be csr11 it could be csr21 just pick one of the router as otv adjacency server and then you can also choose a backup adjacency server like a secondary server so what you do is you communicate to everyone basically uh, communicates to the adjacency server. So the adjacency server knows all the site routers. So whenever a new router or CSR 11, let's say, or CSR 12, it needs to send a packet to, or it needs to know all the neighbors, then it can go to the uh, adjacency server and it can know about all the neighbors existing in that particular OTV cloud. So they will know about it and when they know it, then they can uh, encapsulate the frame in the unicast and they can send across over the unicast transport. So it is it is very similar to the analogy of DMVPN where uh, phase three, where basically you go to uh, your hub router to know the mapping of the NBMA versus your uh, actual private IP addresses mapping you get to know from the hub router. So here also you get to know about the public IP address, public interface IP address of all the neighbor routers of uh, in the, on the OTV cloud by using that agency server information. So you will take a look at that in the configuration section. Um, this is what we have. This is the host site router uh, on the left side. Okay, this is just acting as a host. You can see it has two interfaces. Uh, interface in uh, VLAN 11 and then interface in VLAN 22. Uh, then this is our uh, the site router. Uh, this is what I'm talking about here, CSR 11. Then we have CSR 12. Uh, this is CSR 12. Then we have CSR 21, which is in site number 2, 21, CSR 22, and then finally host site 2, which is this one. If you look at the CSR 11 configuration, uh, if we do a quick recap, uh, this is the LAN facing interface, which is Gigabit 2. You can see the LAN facing interface. It's pretty simple. We're just configuring the bridge domains for uh, VLAN 11, VLAN 22. Uh, additionally, we have configured the bridge domain for service for site VLAN as well, just to make sure that it is forwarding in the spanning tree. If we do a show spanning tree, bridge domain, uh, if you do a show spanning tree uh, VLAN 11, you see that uh, Geek 2 is the forwarding state, the same thing for VLAN 22, and it should be the same thing for VLAN 111 as well, okay? If you look at the overlay, the, the outgoing interface, which is the Gigabit 1, um, this is going to be a simple layer 3. 
as you can see and this is what being advertised to my isp to get me the l3 reachability between all the sites uh, you, you configured ip pim passy we configured igmp version 3 we configured westpf uh, you can use any routing protocol you can use static routing whatever just you need to make sure you have some kind of connectivity uh, between the otv sites and uh, that's pretty much all you do in the uh, public in the, in the join interface and then all the configuration we do is in the oval interface where we configured a uh, OTV join interface, which is Gigabit Ethernet 1. This is my public interface. I have removed the configuration for the OTV control group and the OTV data group. Uh, those are being used for OTV in the multicast mode. Uh, apart from that, you do have the service instance 11 and 12. You do not you do not do the side VLAN here because you do not want to extend the side VLAN over the other sites. You only want to define those bridge domains here, which you want to extend uh, from your site to the others. In this example, I want to extend VLAN 11 and VLAN 22. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna uh, extend that uh, over the other sites here. Okay. So the it's very simple configuration in the overlay. If you if you want to do uh, now, you look at this IP 100.1.11.11. Let's say we are going to make this guy as OTV distance server for for all my OTV routers. So in that case, what I do, I do interface overlay one and then OTV adjacency server unicast only. You do not need to specify the IP address if you are itself the OTV adjacency server. If you are about to define an IP address of a different router, which is the adjacency server, in that case, you have to use a command, which is OTV use adjacency server followed by the IP address which we can do so in this case if you want uh, your uh, if you want to set up also your secondary adjacency server let's say that in this example uh, my this guy is the primary which is csr11 and then csr12 is the secondary if i want to configure that this is the configuration on the csr11 so i configured this as unicast only adjacency server and if i also want to use a secondary server i will use otv use adjacency server and then followed by uh, the address of the CSR12. So if you do show run interface gig2, uh, this is the IP address of my CSR12. So I will use uh, my primary address here was um, 100.1.11.11 .11, followed by the secondary address, which is 12.12 .12, unicast only. It says the local, I think that should be fine. Yes. All right. So now uh, that being configured, we will go to site number two. So we are not going to configure anything on uh, CSR12 yet. We will come back and we will configure it. The OTV is not even configured there. We first want to bring up the OTV uh, connectivity using just one router, and then we will work on the redundancy part of it. So now we will jumping into CSR21. Um, here, if you go to CSR21, and if you do show run interface overlay one, here also I have removed the multicast configuration what I had. interface overlay one and I just need to put this configuration I will not put the adjacency server unicast mode only command because I'm not going to configure CSR 21 itself as an adjacency server it is going to detect a couple of other routers as primary and the secondary adjacency server so I'm going to use only this command on the <coughs> CSR 21 routers all right um, that's all we need uh we do not need any control group or any data group here it's fine uh let me do a no shot okay at this point of time uh if i want to ping uh from the site 1 11.1 .1, to the site 2 uh the ip address for site 2 is uh i think dot 2 yes 123.11.2 the same subnet if i want to reach i do not have reachability because my otv is not up yet uh, we will see how it changes when we have the second site uh, brought up. 
we are not going to do uh, we are now going to do interface overlay one no shut and we will see how things ship up so you will need to wait for a few minutes as we talked about in the previous section that even though the OTV comes up, uh, it doesn't immediately start at uh, exchanging the routes. So if you now do show OTV ISIS adjacency or show OTV adjacency, you see OTV is up. But if you do a show OTV, uh, it can see it. You can see that it is not forward capable. Uh, the AD server is not there. And the LSDB sync is incomplete, and also there is nothing in the show OTV route. Uh, you, you basically don't see anything if you do a show OTV site VLAN uh, site uh, it just doesn't it doesn't say anything show OTV VLAN uh, everything is inactive so basically this is just in the uh, it is building the control plane at this point of time it does take time uh, and once it is completely formed then uh, we will see how it goes so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pause the recording for a few minutes and then uh, I don't want you to wait for two, three minutes here. When, once, once this is done, I'll resume the recording so we can take a look uh, uh, how, how, it, how it goes there. All right, so uh, we have waited for about three to four minutes. And now if you look at show OTV, you can see that it says it is forward capable. It says it is forward ready. Uh, this is the AD server, yes. Um, and this is the join interface uh, unicast only mode this is important for the OTV unicast operation you can take a look at this and you can understand which mode it is using and it is telling who is the primary and the secondary server uh, if you go to site number two which is CSR 21 if you do show OTV it says that uh, yes it is forward capable uh, this is the AD server and uh, it is AD capable and it says who are the primary and the secondary adjacency servers here now if you do show otv site uh this is the site information we do not have a backup site backup router yet so this is the only one excuse me if you do a show otv vlan uh, i am active for both the vlans and the same reason because i do not have any backup router in my site so i'm the active vlan i'm active forwarder for both vlan odd and vlan even, VLAN even right if you do a show otv uh route now you are going to see everything if you do show tv route bridge domain 11 you're going to see the routes for bridge domain 11 and the same thing for bridge domain 22 so now if things are working correctly in the data plane i should be able to ping from site 1 to site 2 which i can similarly you can do the same thing for vlan number 22 Yep, you can reach it, right? And if you look at the show IP ARP uh, for 192.168.123, uh, sorry, 123.11.2, uh, this is the actual MAC address of my host too. So if you go here and do a show interface Ethernet 00, zero pipe include PIA, uh, sorry, You can see this is the mac which i hard coded this is not the bia address uh, yeah you can see this is my mac address so it is, it is basically learning the mac address over the otv and you can see that the remote mac is learned 0002 is learned over isis whereas my local mac address was learned using the uh, bridge domain address here all right, so if I go here in site number two, show IP ARP 192.123.11.1, show TV route. Oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, I need to go to CSR 21 to show TV route bridge domain 11. And sure enough, I'm learning this in my ISIS here. Okay, now it is showing up because I think previously we did not have any packets, so it was not learning it. And now it is learning both uh, the host one and host two. So that's all you need to configure in the unicast mode. Um, as long as these two things are working, I have the reachability between the uh, sites. 
um, configuration as you can see it's pretty pretty straightforward uh, we are gonna stop here in this session and then we are going to start a new session uh, which talks about the OTV uh, redundancy like we, we are going to configure CSR 12 and CSR 22 uh, and we will see how the load balancing happening and then finally you will take a look at the OTV route feature filtering and then the routing across the sites uh, in the next section so thanks for your time take care